And tonight we're diving deep into the intriguing world of evolutionary biology, but from a perspective that you won't hear often in mainstream circles. The focus? A recent study titled Unveiling the Dawn of Complex Life, how a simple creature set the stage for human evolution. Now, secular researchers from the Center for Genomic Regulation claim that a simple creature living a staggering 700 million years ago is responsible for everything from octopus camouflage to human cognition. We're going to examine this study through a different lens, a biblical perspective. And joining us today is Dr. Jerry Bergman, a distinguished biologist and educator with over 25 years of experience teaching and an impressive portfolio, over 800 publications and over 60 books. It's always an honor to have you on the show, Dr. Bergman. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. <laughs> well, it's, it is so, so great to have you on Genesis Science Report. Uh, listen, this article claims that a simple organism from 700 million years ago laid the foundation for all complex life. That's a pretty bold statement. What are the main scientific challenges to these long evolutionary time frames? Well, the main challenge would be number one, we know a lot about genetic mutations. I worked in that field, worked in cancer research. We know an awful lot about genetic mutations. And what happens is the estimates vary, but nonetheless, you're talking about 100 to 200 new mutations every generation. And so if you're talking about 700 million years ago, you're talking about what they call genetic catastrophe. In other words, the mutations are going to kill the organism and eventually the species. Wow. Well, gene duplication events are highlighted as a key factor in evolutionary innovation. Can you explain the potential flaws in this theory and how likely are beneficial mutations in such scenarios? Well, the problem with genetic duplication is the theory is number one, genes duplicate. So you have two genes. One can continue to do the function of that gene. The other can evolve to do something else. But the problem is when you have duplication, number one, you're gonna have mutations in both genes likely. You're gonna have problems in both genes. And we also know that duplication causes disease. The best known example is Huntington's disease, which is a disease which results from genetic mutations and duplications. And so therefore, and there are other diseases as well, but that's some of the, one of the main ones that's well, well publicized. And so when you have duplication, and it does happen, of course, but it does cause a problem. And it's not rational to assume that one gene will do fine, produce whatever it's supposed to produce. The other, the duplicated gene, will mutate and do something else. That's a, it's a story, but it's, it's problematic. <laughs> problematic at best, exactly. Well, the researchers, they label certain modern insects like mayflies, they call them living fossils, meaning that even though they're purported to be millions of years old, they show practically no change within the fossil record to today. But what does that imply about the validity of evolutionary theory as a whole versus a biblical explanation of created design? Well, it's a problem because not only a genetic mutation problem, but it's also a problem because the theory is, is that well, actually, you talk, the article talked about some other organism, but I learned in school and I taught when I taught this that indeed we all, all animals evolve from sponges. And so therefore, they've changed the theory quite a bit. But the problem is, is we have sponges which evolved into all reptiles, amphibians, etc. The problem is mainly that is a problem because as they evolve, you have a lot of changes, but in essence, we all came from sponges, and in essence, well, the good example is, the best example is, the idea that we evolved from worms. Well, that's fine, but some worms has not evolved in the past, what, 700 million years? Other worms have evolved into people, and the, recently they found a worm that evolved human-type eyes, the camera-type eyes, and so it's a funny-looking creature, it's a, a marine creature, but it has, it's a worm, and it's got these eyes sticking out of its head, which in essence are, they claim from the research they've done, that these are very human type eyes. So why would one worm stay a worm for 700 million years, another worm evolve into people, and another worm evolve into interesting organisms with very human type eyes? Uh, that, you know, just put some magical duct tape, call it stasis, call it what you will. It's, it's, there's always some sort of way to rescue it. 
and yet at the same time, it doesn't make logical sense. If we're actually thinking outside the box, if we're logically processing things, this doesn't work. Now the study suggests that some of the genes can, that are found could be traced back to an ancient ancestor. Instead of common ancestry, isn't it more likely common design is a factor here? I mean, how do you explain genetic similarities across species without a common ancestor? Well, you explain genetic similarities because all life has certain requirements. Okay. And those certain requirements mean that they have to have certain genes that will meet these requirements. For example, to take in oxygen in the body, to process food, etc. And therefore, you're going to find similarities. It's like in mechanical area, we find nuts and bolts and washers are commonly used. They're commonly used in simple computers as well as large earth-moving machines. So we find a lot of commonality because those systems, in this case, the nuts and bolts, work well. And you find a lot of commonality in all life because certain genes work well. If you think about it, we have to do many of the same things that bacteria, that insects, etc., have to do. And so therefore, you're going to find similarities in all life because of that similar requirements to survive in the environment that we see around us. Makes perfect sense. In fact, the piece uses metaphors like recipes and libraries to describe evolutionary processes, but to me that sounds like complexly, intelligently created mechanisms, and I think that that is a huge uh, factor that is overlooked. Uh, Dr. Bergman, thank you so much for addressing some of these things because we see these types of articles pop up on science websites all of the time. We see them pop up on National Geographic and Discovery as if it's something revolutionary, but in fact, um, what it's pointing back to uh, are complex design features that are best explained with a biblical worldview. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Bergman.